he is, in a sense, giving consent to the right. sin. When the government dictates what religion is, our morals will be stripped. Well, they're setting it up for you guys, the younger generation, to take the hit. They see a church that's on fire for God. Mm -hmm. That's the church that gets targeted. You're in a worship saying, praise Jesus. We are the army of God. We'll dare to discuss what most churches never will and strive always to speak the truth in love. We are watchmen, warriors, victors. Together, we will fight the good fight and finish strong. This is David Hebner Live. Satanic ritual abuse. Sounds like something out of a out of a horror film or maybe an episode of the Twilight Zone. But for many it's real and it's destroyed the lives of many, many people. But who's listening? Satanic ritual abuse, it's also known as SRA. It's the repetitive act of physical and mental and emotional torture, usually through someone's sexuality. And this is to bring the person into submission. The abuser has total, total control. The victim becomes kind of enslaved to this dark force. And we'll be talking about this tonight. But because SRA is still not widely accepted in the mainstream and in society and the media, as a matter of fact, they're making fun of it if you've seen South Park. The governing authorities, the law enforcement, they, they just don't get it. But because it's not accepted in mainstream, it's very difficult to come up with statistics, numbers of abusers and their victims. And this is by design of Satan. But you see, from my many, many interviews I've done with both victims and what I consider experts in the field of investigating the satanic ritual abuse. I've estimated that in every city in America, at least, well, I would say in most cities, I gotta be careful how I state this, but in every city there is a cult, there are covens, that are active right now and they're performing SRA ceremonies. I would say in every city with at least 100,000 population. And according to Russ Dizdar, someone I've worked closely with on this, any mid-sized city has between 100 and 120 victims at any given time, victims. These cities have covens and by the way, these these groups operate, they're, they're, they're perpetrators, and, and they're there to enhance the kingdom of Satan. You know, this is so vast, and yet where's the church? Where are the preachers? Who's talking about this? But what's the purpose? All right, it's carried out to please only one force, and that's Satan. See, there's two main reasons why they love children. Satan wants children because, first of all, children are so close to God's heart. And number two is it's easy to manipulate the young mind, to, to program them, which we're going to touch on. Children's been preferred as the victim throughout history. You see, SRA seeks to program the body, the mind, the emotions, the soul. Why? Because Satan has an army. He's building an army, just like God has an army. There's God's kingdom, which is greater, and you have Satan's kingdom, which is weaker. But, but Satan, in these last days, is ramping it up. The splitting of personalities, these program multiples. But who's the abuser? It's short and it's simple. It is Lucifer. It is the Antichrist. It is the evil one. But so many people chalk it up as conspiracy. And yet, 
They're denying the cries of those victims, people that are hurting, they're crying out. As a matter of fact, people are afraid to even come forth. But as a Christian evangelist investigator, I'm searching for the truth, for the facts based on God's word. Did you hear? Based on God's word. Number one is SRA, satanic ritual abuse. Is it in scripture? Is it real? If it's real and it exists, it's in God's word because nothing outside of God's word is real. Oh, it's real in Satan's world, but it's a counterfeit. The answer is yes, it is real because throughout civilizations, there's been no no denying that there's nations sacrificing children. We even do it today. Oh, yeah, it's called Planned Parenthood. Well, let's go. Let's go to the, there's five. I think there's five. There's either, let's see, one, two, three, four. Yeah, there's five. five. There's many, but I want to I point out five. The first one's Babylon. All right? Babylon was one of the most powerful societies of the ancient world in the 23rd century B.C. They sacrificed humans mostly children to their deities, to their gods. The next one, Aztecs. About 1450 AD, the Aztecs were known for performing child sacrifices for their religious beliefs. Recently, the skull of a boy was found by excavators in an ancient Aztec city in Mexico. The boy was likely between eight and 10 years old and had been dressed as a war god himself. Thousands of objects were buried with this little boy, many placed on the various parts of his body. This boy's sacrifice has been named Offering 176. They've discovered this, they've proven it. It's likely that this offering of 176 was killed and sacrificed to the Aztec war god in order to bring blessings upon their city. Let's go to the Mayans. The Mayan civilization carried on practices that human sacrifice their gods who carried a certain delicacy. What did they require? They required this delicacy, which is called a young child. The Mayans believed their gods were empowered by the blood of young children. Canaan. Canaan encompasses land, which is modern-day Lebanon, Syria, Jordan, Israel. Scripture refers to it many times as the ancient Canaanite god named Molech, who they sacrificed children to. Last but not least, the Israelites. Oh, yeah, Israelites? Really? Before the decree in Leviticus, the Israelites often practiced human sacrifice, which included children, sometimes even to the foreign god Baal, if it's real. Is it real? Yes, it is real. It was real then, it's real now. But why are the churches not talking about it? Why are the churches not dealing with it? You know, I've interviewed so many victims of SRA, and we have a guest on tonight that's a survivor of SRA. And they all speak the same language, that they have the story, their experiences seem to, they seem to entwine like a, like a perfectly weaved rug. Do they read each other's books? Do they study each other's stories so they can manufacture this? I don't think so. I've talked to too many. I'm talking many, many, many. Maybe some, but most know. It's coming from the heart. It's a true, real experience. By the way, it comes from within families. That's right, the perpetrators sometimes come within the victim's own family. And this is why you and I are here tonight. This is why we are the church, because the church out there won't talk about it. So God has called people like one and I to come together to bring this out into the open and blast Satan back into the gates of hell. We're a family telling the truth of how Satan is operating today so people can be delivered. Seminary student, a uh, friend of mine, and a pastor now, now pastors a pretty big denom- non, a denominational church, and uh, he says, uh, I don't, never forget, he says, David, this, this SRA thing, this SRA thing, he says, uh, it ain't real. I mean, come on, it's, it, it sounds like 
propaganda. It sounds like conspiracy. I mean, it, he says, I, I just want the truth. You want the truth, pastor? You can't handle the truth because the truth is that it is real. The truth is it's in Scripture, and baby, here it is. Let's chew on this. 1 Peter 5.8, 1 Peter 5.8, plain and simple. Be alert and sober and of sober mind. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. devour. Did you hear that? Be alert, be aware, sober mind. How can you have a sober mind? Be alert if you turn your back to it. If you, if you call it conspiracy, if you want to neglect the victims, and oh, I can't talk to you right now. She's crazy, or he's nuts. No, your enemy, your enemy, my enemy, prowls like a roaring lion and wants to devour whoever he can find, whoever's weak, whoever's uninformed. You ever seen a lion eat? They don't kill their prey first. They just eat it. You know, the, the prey's still alive. I guess I like it because that blood's still moving. That's what Satan does to his people. He, he pounces on them like a roaring lion and eats them while they're kicking and still alive. While they're screaming, SRA's not real. Astral projection's not real. Demonic possession's not real. Meanwhile, the lion is eating these preachers and these, these religious people as they're screaming, ah, it's not real, but I'm getting eaten. Roaring lion, I know it's demonic, comes from the pits of hell. It's murdering babies, it's, it's human trafficking, it's demonic possession, it's set, satanic ritual abuse. This is how the devil operates. Don't talk to me about someone lying, cheating. Yes, I know that's a sin. Let's get real, for at least during this gathering. All right, let's go to Deuteronomy. Jared, you got Deuteronomy 18, 10, 12. This is how God feels about sacrifice, about satanic ritual abuse. God's crying out to his people in these last days. Folks, he wants us to wake up and understand what's really happening. Deuteronomy 18, 10 through 12. Let no one be found among you who sacrifices their son or daughter in a fire, who practices divination or sorcery, interprets omens, engages in witchcraft or casts spells, or who is a medium or spiritualist or who consults the dead. Anyone who does these things is detestable to the Lord because these, of these same detestable practices, the Lord your God will drive out those nations before you. That's how God feels about it. And tonight, we're driving out the demons before us. We're coming against them. We're exposing them for the evil that they're doing against our children, against all. So good to be with you. We're here every Monday night, 8 p.m., 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Uh, keep, keep slipping back on that one. But hey, this is, this is our church, okay? This is this, this gathering we have. This is, I believe, the, the new um, paradigm shift. And I said this before, and how pe people worship, how we come together how we study the Word of God, okay? And I'm so glad to have you with me. I'm, I'm so appreciative of your prayers, of your encouragement. I've had so many people say that we have such a loving um, chat room gathering, and we come against any evil that might come in and disrupt that, but you guys are such a blessing. If you'd like to get involved um, in any way, I'd like for you to text the word CHOSEN to 71777. You can get involved in this ministry. What do we do? We bring out things like this. We talk about demonic warfare. We talk about satanic ritual abuse. We talk about, um, you know, things that, not only the things that church doesn't talk about, it's things that they don't even know about. And in some cases, some of these churches are actually doing them. They're performing witchcraft in the church, new age, and some of them are brain dead. They don't even know it. Folks, people have called us 
conspiracy theorists. But no, we're children of the living God, bringing the word out, bringing the truth out to people, okay? And this is what God has called us to do as watchmen. We're to watch and we're to warn. And that's what we're doing. We're watching and we're warning. And together, we are the church, all right? So text that word chosen to 71777. You can go to davidheavener.tv forward slash chosen because you are chosen. And I'm so glad that you're chosen to be here tonight. When we come back, I'm gonna be talking to my guest, Kay. She's an SRA survivor. She has a story that I promise you, you will not forget. And I promise you that she has overcome and she's teaching pastors and others that are victims how to come out of it, how to be delivered in the name of Jesus. Stay with me. We'll be right back. There's a practice, an ancient practice, where one's spirit leaves their body. It's called astral projection. Okay, so dreams. Could this be a form of astral projection? I can tell you that practitioners on the other side yeah. and ex-Satanists will tell you what I'm going to say. Okay. We target your dreams. A woman woke up. She felt the presence of something in the doorway yeah. that was trying to pull her out of her flesh. And what she did was call out to the name of Jesus and bang, that attack stopped. She went back into her body, she woke up. The, the New Agers call it the, the astral plane. It's sort of like a parallel dimension. A lot of times people will experience things like uh, sleep paralysis. It's real, but lethal. Real, but counterfeit. Real, but, but uh, completely in error. There's a risk of insanity. God is totally against it. If the church was doing its job, would New Age and astral projection be so prevalent amongst Christians? The time has come for God's people to take a stand. Legalize Jesus. Text 71777, the word chosen, to 71777, or go to davidhevener.tv forward slash chosen. Join the movement. Hey everybody, David back with you every Monday night, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We're on Roku, Amazon, YouTube, Facebook. Don't forget to join us underground. Uh, at eight o'clock, we disconnect and you go to davidheavener.tv. You must be a member, come underground with us. And we talk about things we normally can't talk about. And why is it so important that we come together every week and we bring this stuff into the open? Because we are the new movement of the church. People, I've had so many people say, David, I, I tuned into the channel, whether it's Roku or YouTube, whatever, and I'm hearing things that I've never heard before. And I go back to the Bible and I study it. And sure enough, the Bible talks about it. Folks, I want to encourage you to invite people to this gathering every Monday night, okay? And when you get the videos on YouTube or, yeah, YouTube, Facebook, pass them around. Uh, ask people to like, subscribe. I'm not out. Listen, I don't go for numbers. But the more people we can touch, you never know. There may be someone out there because of you, because you are someone's last evangelist, that they are going to come to Christ. You may be the only Jesus they ever see. All right? So what are we talking about? We're talking about satanic ritual abuse. Some people call it SRA. Well, that's short for satanic ritual abuse. The question is, and I've asked this question before, and I want to know, we're going to find out with my guest, is why are few people talking about it? If it's in Scripture, if it's uh, in the history, I mean, if, even if you want to study Scripture as a history book, which is not really, you know, viable in my world, it's the Word of God, but you can see these civilizations practiced it. Why would it not be happening today? What are we... Uh, are we so civilized now that uh, ain't going to happen? No way. The question is, why is that happening? I know the answer. The answer is Satan is blinding people, but we're going to get into it deep with my guest, uh, Kay. Kay, you with me out there? I am. All right. Good to so, be with you, David. So good to have you. Kay, you're a survivor of satanic ritual abuse. Um, when did it start with you? How old were you? 
where and when did it start? Truly, uh, the, the abuse, the spiritual abuse began at conception for me. Um, but there were rituals that per were performed over my mother's womb while I was in utero. And then at birth, I was raised in a multi-generational um, Illuminati bloodline. And I didn't discover the ritual abuse until I was in my mid-20s. So I was abused and pulled into the rituals probably full till I was in my early 20s at least. So let's go back to um, you were in the womb. Let's, let's put a pause button on that. Uh, first of all, how do you know you were in the womb? Somebody must have told you. And while you're in the womb at conception, you're growing as a baby in the womb, um, who was doing this to you? Well, let me let me step back just a little bit and say that multi-generational occult families dedicate the bloodlines. They dedicate the sperm. They dedicate the ovaries. They dedicate the womb of uh, participants. And, and these parts of the reproductive system are dedicated to Lucifer. Yeah. And sometimes in those rituals, there are even uh, blood sacrifices to seal the dedication. So when you've got a bloodline that's got hundreds of generations in it, um, then the enemy will claim all of those children. So for me, I actually remember leaving the father's hand and coming and and just hitting this spiritual evil right <laughs> just my, my first experience on earth oh, um oh, okay let me okay i've got to i i gotta uh get in there okay because uh, if every if other people think of what i'm thinking i'm gonna ask the question that i think other people are thinking i want to be very specific when you were in the womb was there someone over that womb that was praying a satanic uh, prayer over you? Was there somebody? Who was that somebody? What does that look like? Well, there were there were multiple rituals that were done over my mother's womb. And okay. I find this consistently when I work with other survivors. Uh, and one of the renunciation prayers I'll lead them into is revoking the father's spiritual authority to download spiritual evil into the womb. So because in the womb, the baby is almost fully right-brained and very, you know, in a different like dreamlike state, it's very, very easy to shatter the soul. Oh. And for those that want to do mind control programming, they find that the earlier they start with trauma, the more successful they are in creating dissociative identities in a person. Oh. And each trauma opens the soul to the demonic realm. Oh. <laughs> okay, okay, hang on. You're you're running a marathon at a thousand miles an hour, and I'm hopping on one leg. Okay, let's go All back right. to. Let, that's okay. I want to be very specific. If we could just stay on track here, you're you were in the womb. Your mother is carrying you. Where is your mother? Is she laying on an altar somewhere? Are people laying hands over her? What's going on for you to have this? I do that's, believe that's what happened. Mm -hmm. oh, okay, so she was in a, a, a an SRA satanic ritual abuse ceremony, and there were people over her. Okay, can you believe yes. that? Okay, so your mother was she was part of this. She she had a my mother was a high level witch. Mm -hmm. Okay, where was your father in this? My father was very was deeply involved. Oh every step of the way okay. he was involved mm -hmm. we're both okay, involved so your father all right your father was involved did they have you specifically to be birthed as a um as a as an sra sacrifice an sra victim intentionally they intentionally brought me into the world to um to continue the generational line okay now I'm getting it. You have to, okay, I'm a little slow. 
comes to these things. All right, so let's back up. Let me kind of uh, let me kind of summarize this. Your mother was a witch. Your father was in, involved long bloodlines of, of of satanic ritual abuse and a lot of other things, which we'll get into. They had you for the purpose of carrying on this bloodline of satanic ritual abuse, correct? Yes, the intention was that I would take my mother's mantle, her witchcraft uh, mantle, and continue. Ah, uh, but Jesus came along and broke that chain and messed everything up for Satan. Uh, he gotcha. sure did. All yeah. right, <laughs> now, now I'm getting it. Okay, so let's talk about your mother and your father. Now, your father was in the military, right? And you said yes. he was gone like for eight years. And he had some connection with, with the Nazis. How does this play into this? Well, there's a, a lot of pieces to the puzzle, but I will say this. Uh, when I was eight, my father left the country and um, he went, actually he went to the Philippines and he was there for many years. And he came back when I was um, in my early teens. So, but my father during World War II, he was a Navy pilot during World War II and he spoke German. He was very fond of the German people. And um, it is my belief that he was actually a double agent during World War II. Now, both of my parents were in their 40s when I was born. So, um, of course, he had a life before I came along. Um, years later i recovered memories in south america with joseph Mengele, who was uh, deeply involved with nazi mind control programming and it's, during the holocaust he was a doctor scientist that did uh experiments on the on the jews yes and i believe that the research that he did he actually sold to uh, to the cia and other mind control programming organizations mm -hmm. And this, so, is, this is your father's tie into into the Nazis because the Nazi rat line came into America. We're not going to get into that now, but that was your father's connection into the SRA and the program multiples, right? Yes. And so yeah. both of my parents worked at Lockheed, which was a military contract house that was deeply connected with the space program and the Nazis that came in. So, oh. yes. Okay. All right, Kay. So let's go back to you. So you're a baby. You were now after you were born, did they take you as a child and lay you out on an altar and, and do these uh, satanic ritual abuses? I don't want to get graphic or anything, but can you give us an idea of what it was like between the age of, I don't know, one, two years old up until you were, you know, 10 years old? What was happening during that time? Well, I've recovered memories of being sexually abused. My father was a pedophile. Um, so there was sexual abuse consistently from the time I was born. Um, but I do have horrific memories of rituals sometimes in the bed in the house. Uh, sometimes they were out in the woods, they were in different locations. And those uh, memories include the black robes and the candles and the things that the most SRA survivors describe. I do remember those things. I um, uh, I have I have memory of being sexually abused by each of the members of the cult. Um, as you know, tiny tiny child. Um, I have a memory when I was between two and three years old of a ritual sacrifice and my father um, forcing me to put my hands on the ritual dagger and then he put his hands on mine. And so rituals were, were uh, really horrific and the abuse was unimaginable. Okay. I mean, if it wasn't for Jesus, I wouldn't be here today. Uh, absolutely. Okay. Um, how did this affect you going into your teenage years? Did you act out? Um, what and also did you even two, two questions? Let's go one at a time. Did you act out? Did this affect you as a teenager? Oh, absolutely. Um, 
I was a breeder for the cult, which meant that they would get me pregnant, take my babies and sacrifice them. So by the age of 14, I believe I had had already had three babies and I was um, absolutely rebellious and angry. I hated my mother. I hated my stepfather. Um, and so at 14, I ran away from home and actually I was a little vet street urchin vagabond. I was very, very promiscuous, um, used alcohol and any drug I could get my hands on just to alleviate the pain. I was in tremendous emotional pain. Yeah. It, it, Kate, um, you said by 14, you'd had, you thought you had uh, two or three miscarried uh, babies. Um, were you, did you have a, 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 a union, a sexual union with a person, or was this an implant to, to give you this baby? What was, what, how did you well, have there a baby? Was, there was sexual intercourse um, each, each time. I do remember them okay. trying to do some cloning at one point later on, okay. um, but no, there was a full sexual oh, intercourse. As okay. a matter of fact, I mean, here might be a point to say, I remember I was taken to the Vatican. I remember elaborate ceremonies uh, with Pope Paul VI. I was impregnated by Pope Paul VI and brought back to the Vatican to have the baby. So, and this was... You were at the age of like 14 or young teens? Early teens. I was or, 12 to 14. Or, okay. And, okay, so you had these babies and you've never seen the babies. These babies were used, you believe, so that they could either program or they could use for sacrifices because there's two... Uh, avenues of satanic ritual abuse. One is to sacrifice to the gods. Uh, the other one is to program for future purpose. You believe that you had these babies for which? Do you have any idea? Or they murdered both? my my babies were murdered. Uh, uh, okay. All right. Gotcha. We're going to take a break on that. Um, we're talking to Kay. She's a survivor of satanic ritual abuse. I'm hearing things for the first time. Okay. Uh, just like you are. When we come back, we're going to be talking about what can you look for if someone is being abused. In other words, it's happening all around us. Kay says that when she talks to people, at least 20% of the congregation she believes is a victim of satanic ritual abuse, and that's in a church. We come back, we're going to find out how God's people can move forward and defeat this and be delivered. Stay with me. We'll be right back. Everybody is someone's last evangelist. You bring out what the other churches don't bring out. 10 million ritually abused people. Yes. You expose things that they don't talk about. I just want to say thank you to David for making these videos because he's made people aware of what's going on. It's not the lukewarm church that's going to awaken. They're going to think, oh, the New World Order is wonderful. This is what we've been praying for. A demon right. could take on the form of an alien. You know, okay. Satan can mask, masquerade himself as an angel of light. Okay. They get into people and cause people to do blood sacrifices and do all these demonic things. You talk about what other pastors, so-called ministers, don't talk about. I'm just so grateful for the work that you have done. So thankful for everything that you're doing and fighting for us in Hollywood. Stop playing church. It's time to be the church. And that's what I love about it. They've made many, many movies about aliens. But the question is, are they angelic or demonic? Why don't they want to acknowledge uh, the supernatural. Uh, the seminary education today, that when pastors are being trained, there's no emphasis on the supernatural, even though the Bible's a supernatural book. As in the days there's of no, uh, so it will be. Yeah. And it goes down to, well, what is their ultimate purpose? Inaugurate the Antichrist.
The time has come for God's people to take a stand. Legalize Jesus. Text 71777, the word chosen, to 71777, or go to davidhevener.tv forward slash chosen. Join the movement. Okay, we're back. I'm David. Good to be with you every Monday night, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Got it right that time. Hey, um, if you'd like to order anything from Amazon, just remember us. We're a we're a, um, a nonprofit, and Amazon does give a few nickels and dimes every time you order something. You can just go to smile.amazon.com forward slash ch forward slash four five dash two five four one three one three sure appreciate that please consider becoming a um a prayer partner you can email me, email me at david davidhevener.com or you can email me and ask for prayer we we want to pray for you we want you to be a part of this okay we have over 600 prayer warriors praying for us every week during the week uh if you'd like to get involved in the ministry uh just text the word chosen to 71777 all right, so we're talking to Kay. She's a SRA survivor. SRA is satanic ritual abuse. Um, it's been going on since, uh, well, since the, uh, almost the creation of, of man. And uh, it's worse now it's ever been, even though most churches deny it. They want to put their head in the sand, don't they? Like on a lot of issues. But she is a survivor. She's an overcomer. God's using her to march forward and help others come out of uh, uh, being a victim of satanic ritual abuse. Kay, um, is, is this satanic ritual abuse, people that are abused in SRA, they're victims, are they many times demonically possessed, meaning they've been victimized so much that they have, they're possessed by a demon? Yes, absolutely. Um, many of them the enemy has not only claimed them from conception, but because of, of what they've experienced in terms of abuse and satanic rituals, there's definitely um, demonic attachments to the soul. To this, and that needs to be cleansed. What are some of the symptoms of um, people that have been in, uh, that, that are, have been, um, abused in the satanic ritual abuse. What do you look for? And I know it doesn't always apply, but give me some of the behaviors that we can look for, or maybe it happened to us and we can go, wow, I'm there. What are some of the, some of the behaviors? Well, there, there really are a lot of symptoms. And, you know, if you were a physician and someone came with a list of symptoms like this, you'd be like, wow, where do I start? Um, but with SRA, SRA survivors are going to have um, certainly spiritual issues. A lot of times they, well, ritual abuse is spiritual abuse. So they're going to have issues trusting God. They're going to have issues. Many are, are triggered around spiritual things like Bibles or crosses or communion. Um, so those are some common spiritual um, kind of triggers for SRA survivors. All SRA survivors are sexually abused. So you're gonna find the full litany of indicators for sexual abuse will apply. So that will be everything from either aversion to sexuality or extreme promiscuity and then perversions with sexuality. A lot of times uh, SRA survivors struggle with homosexuality because homosexuality is part of the satanic rituals. So there can be a um, plethora of sexual indicators. Um, SRA survivors are DID. So they're going to have multiple personalities. So one minute they're one person and the next minute they're another person. 
They often struggle mm -hmm. with anger. They often struggle with um, health issues, lots and lots of health issues. And sometimes even things that don't seem explainable, pains in the body that the doctor can't find a, an explanation for, those are symptoms. I also look for things like, um, nighttime kinds of symptoms where people tell me, oh, well, I'm being visited by spirits at night. Real quick, Kay, what is the royal bloodline so people understand that? So in occultism, they believe that spiritual power can be inherited, sort of like blue eyes and blonde hair can be inherited. They believe that spiritual power can flow through the bloodlines. Well, mm -hmm. royal bloodlines, um, for many centuries, um, these royal bloodlines have been, so there's, there's a whole legend of the Merovingian bloodlines, uh, especially where they believe that they're descendants of King David, that they're, um, actually descendants of Jesus and that they have the power of those bloodlines, but then they turn that power for occult purposes. Yeah. So the the royal bloodlines tend to have an extensive amount of um rituals in them but also people from those royal bloodlines are tracked and followed in, in terms of occultists um having an interest in those bloodlines oh. so they continue the ritual abuse okay. through the okay. All right. i want to touch on something then i'm we're going to jump to another subject. I want to back up a little bit. You mentioned DID. For you guys that don't, uh, uh, that are just catching on here or, or tuning in, um, we're talking about satanic ritual abuse. And there's two avenues. One is to abuse a child. Usually it's a child. It could be any, any age. Uh, you lift it up to a god. Uh, they sacrifice to their god. Number two is uh, these children are used to program, called program multiples, where they inflict pain where they uh, separate their personalities into multiple personalities. Uh, the um, mental health world uh, calls it a DID, disassociative identity disorder, which means it's, but it's all the same. We're talking spiritually here right now, okay? So Kay, were you a program multiple? Were you split? Did you have multiple personalities? Thousands of them, yes. Okay, how did those person, do you, how did they, how'd you get delivered? How did they heal? How'd they come together? Well, one of the misconceptions in the church is that you can cast out, you know, that the multiple personalities are demons and you can cast them out. Well, that I would say that's abusive. Demons are assigned to that specific personality, right? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And now here's the thing. You're right. People try to cast out personalities. The personality belongs to the person. You cast out the demon, the personalities need to heal. Um, Kay, what you used to astral out as a child. Now, astral projection for you guys that are just tuning in is, is people can, it's practiced uh, even in the, well, with new agers, but it's even practiced in the church where they uh, cast their spirit out uh, in, uh, that's astral projection. Kay, you used to astral out as a child? Yes. Um, programmed multiples are trained to astral out from infancy. They will create so much trauma that the baby can't, babies can't run or fight or so they'll just lift, they'll just lift right out of the body. And so that's one of the ways that they train um, train a person is to lift out of their body. So some of the programming was daytime parts and nighttime parts and nighttime parts were sometimes considered like bats that uh, would be awake at night and they would travel in the astral realms and the astral realms would be your spiritual realms. Um, and so SRA survivors are trained to do that so that they can actually attend rituals in, in the astral realm. Wow. Uh, Kate, when we come back, I want to talk to you about your ministry. You go into churches, you talk to pastors. Okay. We're talking to Kay. She's an SRA survivor and overcomer. Uh, when we come back, 
I'm going to be asking Kay about how this victims and how she goes into churches and spots SRA victims in the church. We're going to talk to her about how it's prevalent in the church. And also, what about her own family? How do they feel about what she's doing? And where is she with her relationships with her children, her husband? Stay with me. We'll be right back. War, conquest, famine, and death. The four horsemen are coming. This is not a film that sees conspiracies. It's not a film that mongers fear. It's not a film that blames bankers or politicians. It's a film that questions the systems we've created and suggests ways to reform them. Over centuries, systems have been subtly modified, manipulated and even corrupted, often to serve the interests of the few. We have continually accepted these changes, and because man can adjust to living under virtually any conditions, the trait that's enabled us to survive is the very trait that has suppressed us. All right, David, we're back here with you. What are we talking about? Satanic ritual abuse. I have Kay with me, she's a survivor. Um, Kay, um, you go into churches, you train pastors what to look for, how to talk uh, to uh, people that are victims. Um, when you go into a church and you're talking to a congregation, are you seeing any SRA victims out in that congregation? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, I, it, it is so much more prevalent than people realize it would be shocking to you if you really knew um, how high a percentage it is. It's very wow. high. What population. percentage would you say? I know we're just throwing stuff against the wall here, but you walk into well, a church at any given time, what percentage of people do you think have been SRA victims come in contact with it? Well, let me qualify that just a little bit. Let me just say, think about how many Masonic lodges there are all over the country. Think about religion think about um, um, how prevalent those things are and that that these organizations have access to children and part of the 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 role of the programming is actually to hide the abuse it's it they do try to attempt to keep people functional so to hide the abuse so people go into churches looking to get you know, to be well, to have family, to do the right thing. Um, but so many people in churches have been abused from childhood, whether, and, you know, there's a number of different factions that do satanic ritual abuse, but many people in churches have done it. So I will, I'll just share a couple of statistics for you. I went into a church uh, in Chicago where they had a deaf church and they had 50, 50 members of the deaf, deaf church of that church. And I met with people uh, and ministered to them. 25 of the 50 were SRA survivors. Uh, some of them were all in the same family and every member in the family was SRA. Wow. How do pastors receive you for the most part when you... <laughs> I, you know, I think they're uncomfortable with me um, because I'm bringing information that they may not want to hear. Right. And, and then yeah. they get worried about, well, how am I going to explain that to my congregation? And how am I going to, you know, what am I going to do once I know and understand this, then I'm accountable to right. do something about it. And so a lot of times pastors would prefer 
prefer not to not to even tread on those waters so yeah well i think it's there's two reasons one is they have members in the congregation they know are going to feel uneasy and and pastors who are weak okay who who put what the congregation thinks over what the truth is they'll they'll succumb to that they'll give in to that because oh i've got a donor over here you know writes that big fat check or i got molly over here it's just going to cause me grief so i don't really want to bring this up that's wrong preacher that's dead wrong you never ever want to do that that's number one okay number two they could be a victim themselves or i say this they could be a perpetrator yes have, have, have you ever encountered that where you've gone into a pulpit gone into and you've picked up that this person uh in the church maybe it's an elder maybe it's someone who's in leadership you ever picked up where they may have, be involved in it yes absolutely wow as a matter of fact i was in missouri not too long ago and i could feel the demonic from across the street on a little church in a little tiny town and so i actually intentionally went into the church on a sunday morning to spy it out and to, to pray i felt like children were being ritually abused in in the church and what was shocking to me is the pastor mentioned the word ritual 10 times in the first 15 minutes of her sermon so wow. i felt like she was actually attempting to program her congregation it, it was a she a female mm -hmm. pastor and and you're saying she was a perpetrator she was she was in the pulpit but with the intention of programming people sitting there listening to her yes i, I that is what i believe mm -hmm. wow do you realize what you're saying is that there could be churches out there that are actually covens that yes that the church is a camouflage for covens and they're there for the purpose of satanic worship and satanic ritual abuse. Yes, absolutely, that is true. Wow. Kate, uh, my last question for you, you've been through so much. Tell me about your family. Where is your husband in all this? You have children, what, mm -hmm. are they, tell me, are they uh, open to this or what do they say about this? I discovered the ritual abuse when I was seven months pregnant with my daughter. And um, my, my husband and I, um, so she was, she was born, my husband married me, did not know about the SRA. I didn't know about the SRA when we got married. And um, about 18, we knew something was wrong, but we didn't know what. And um, by the time, we had our second child. I was actually carrying our second child when the ritual abuse memories started to come up for me. Yeah. So it wasn't long after that, that I started to recover memories of babies that I had had that had been murdered. And my husband at that point was like, I can't, mm, I can't go there with you. I don't believe it. And so he really turned his back on me on that. Um, but I needed help, so I continued getting counseling and, and um, worked with therapists actually for 19 years. And during those years, he'd be like, I don't wanna hear it, don't talk to me about it, so, which was very, very painful for me. Um, I stayed in the marriage for the children um, because I felt like it was the right thing to do for our children. When my husband and I separated, uh, we separated about 14 years ago. Um, and at that time, he came to me with a binder from a Christian university on false memory syndrome. And he said, here, you know, maybe we could reconcile if you would just admit that these are all false memories. Oh, and no. Uh -huh. I was like, uh, it, no, and it I was don't a think I've ever been so mad in my life. <laughs> and, and it was a Christian university. He got a Christian this? university. Oh yes. my goodness. Okay. Mm -hmm. And your children, are they still with you? You have a relationship so, with them? I have, I have two adult children now they're in their thirties. My daughter, a couple of years ago decided that she didn't, um, she didn't want me 
in her life. She didn't want her, her, my grandchildren to be with me and uh, she cut off relationship. And my husband at that point decided to divorce me. So I still have, I still have a relationship with my son, but it's very guarded. He doesn't, okay. doesn't like me. Won't talk about his material. So yeah. So you were a victim for so many years. God delivered you, not only delivered you, but God gave you the mission, the word to go forth and help other people. Okay. And here you are trying to get help other people get out of this darkness and you lose your family. You know, your husband turns, your daughter turns. Kate, the Bible talks about this, that in these last days, that father will turn against son, you know, mother against daughter. You're experiencing this, but you're doing it for, for God and your experience in this persecution that they talk about in scripture. Mm -hmm. It's very painful. Yeah. So you, um, you what, what was that? My last question, I promise. What was that pivotal moment where God spoke to you and said, Kay, you're my child. I love you. Now I want to reveal to you. I'm going to open that door and let you walk through it of what you've been through. Re unveil the truth. Do you remember? Was that was there a pivotal moment there? Well, I'll tell you, the first uh, ritual abuse memory was so horrific. I was screaming in the therapist's office. I um, I was eight months pregnant and hysterical, and the, tra the memory was so horrific. Um, I went home, and I locked myself in the bathroom, and I, really, I thought I was going to die. I thought I would die. I thought my baby would die. And that God touched me in that moment. That was one of the, a miracle moment. And I heard him say to me, all you have to do is turn and give it all to me, give it to me. Wow. And in that moment, he lifted that trauma memory and he lifted the pain. And I remember getting up and getting in the shower and I realized if God could take that, if God could heal that, I could walk through whatever I needed to walk through with him and God faithfully memory by memory. And there were well over 150 of them walked me through each and every one of them. In wow. Wow. Mm -hmm. But you had to do one thing. You had to give it all to God. Yeah. Um, you weren't in a place, Kay, that you could play lukewarm Christian. You weren't in a place where you <laughs> could sit on the fence and play games with God, which is what most of the church is doing. You were at a place, it was do or die. You weren't yes. gonna, you weren't gonna make it. You were either gonna go all for God or you're gonna fall so far in this darkness, you may have never come back again. That's exactly right. Mm -hmm. You know, as we close with this, what would you tell people out there that think that they're a victim, may have been victimized or a perpetrator? Let's start with the victims first. What what do you tell them? Well, I just want to say that there really is healing. There really is hope in the darkness. It is a long journey, but God is faithful and he can and will restore and heal you. If you let him, if you'll surrender, if you'll yield, and I mean completely yield to him, he can do miracles. And then how about the perpetrator? Because you know, perpetrators, they a lot of times were victims and they're acting exactly. out. What would you what would you say to them if someone's out well, there listening right now? You know, technically, I'm a perpetrator. I mean, I I was part of ritual murders. I was part of sexually abusing other children as part of the rituals as a child. Yeah. And when I remembered those things, I wanted to die. I mean, yeah. I'm I'm a Christian. I'm finding out I did these horrible things. I just wanted to die. And so God was like, you know, this is a place of more deep surrender to me and trusting that I really can heal you and forgive you and bring you through this. And so I'd say to perpetrators, if you will trust God and get with right people that understand that this is part of ritual abuse is the the perpetration that you can heal, God will forgive you. And by healing, you can stop doing those things that hurt you and others. 
Oh, amen. Kate, give everyone your contact, your website, how they can get in touch with you. I know you go into churches, you have a ministry. Give us your your information. So I'm with, uh, I have a ministry called Revelation Gateway Ministries, LLC. I just founded it in Denton, Texas. And you can reach me at info at rgmconnect.com. And the website is rgmconnect.com, um, which stands for Revelation Gateway Ministries Connect, RGM. Awesome. Okay, I got to have you back. With this, I mean, we just touched the tip of the iceberg. I mean, I've got notes here that I never even got to. Would you come back with us again and share some valuable, valuable uh, both information and testimony. Would you come back again? Absolutely. I'd be honored. Thank, Thank you, you. Thank you. And uh, Kay's going to be with us underground. Thank you, Kay. God bless you. All right. That's Kay. She's uh, a survivor, an overcomer. She's been delivered of satanic ritual abuse, SRA. It does exist. It is real. And maybe you have been listening and you said, David, I'm, I've experienced some of those things that Kay has talked about, some things you talked about. I want you to understand that God loves you. I want you to understand that this is an appointment. This is an anointing. It's not just an appointment. It's an anointing. That's right, this time in this place of us talking together, you and I, it's an appointed time and an anointed time. So I want you to email me at david at davidhevener.com and tell me your story, because I know you're out there listening. We are gonna have prayer requests. We are gonna have praise reports, but I just want you to understand that because you're here and I'm here, it's not an accident. I want to thank you for being with me tonight. I love you guys. And I look so forward to being with you every Monday night at 7 p.m. Ask people if they will come and join us. There's people out there hurting. They need the spiritual nourishment. They need the truth. They need Jesus. And just remember, you never really lived till you found something we're dying for. We'll see you next week. Everybody, David here. I just want to personally thank you for being a part of this ministry. Yes, we are a ministry. I like to think we're a church from the inside out. And what does that mean? It means that most churches started with a physical congregation, and then they kind of ended up going you know, streaming online. You see, we started out with what I consider the new world of uh, fellowship, okay? Not that we shouldn't do it in person, we should, but we started out online, okay? And we have grown tremendously. Though I don't put credibility in numbers, I look at it as it's God's uh, sign that we are moving in the right direction. And what are the three things that we stand for? Number one, we stand on healing. We believe that God has transferred his power to us to heal. Number two is that we can cast out demons. We, we, are, uh, we are equipped for demonic warfare. Number three, we stand against the false prophets, the apostate uh, religion. This is what has drug many of God's children into the darkness. We're all about exposing the darkness. I want to thank you for being a part of this. God bless you. I love you. Talk to you soon.